Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Human Colony Hukalo TV Saturday webinar. It is uh, April 30th, Saturday, 2016. And today we have Kim Louise going to channel for us. Valerie is off today. Um, we have Mark Zinzau. He'll be helping out. And um, in the room today, we have Brian and Christine and Christopher and Omran and Sam and Shrong and Will. Hello, Will. And um, Mark, do you have an announcement or something there? You'd like to say hello? Hello. I uh, just want to remind people if they are participating to try and use earphones or a headset to cut down on echoes. Awesome. Thank you. Will, would you like to say something about the retreat real quick here at the start of the thing? Awesome. Yes. We are gathering in Hot Springs, Arkansas on June 18th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, and we're going back home on the 22nd. We're going to do a whole bunch of awesome stuff. Jim is going to be doing the Saturday morning webinar live from Hot Springs. Roxy is going to be there. And Dan's going to be there. Sarah Oxidine is going to be there. Quantum Galactic Healing Society. We have a whole bunch of other people that are coming. Human Colony members. Uh, some that aren't Human Colony members. It's totally, totally awesome. We're going to come and uh, have a fabulous time. Awesome. Thank you, Will. Um, there's more information available on the Human Colony website on Facebook and Will's uh, Reiki with Will website and my uh, Quantum Galactic Distance Healing site on Facebook and other places and other points of interest. I think Sarah's got it posted on uh, uh, Quantum Galactic uh, Society and several other places. So you can find that information everywhere and um, and all of that kind of stuff. So think that over. You got what? We have eight weeks. Eight weeks before the event. Seven weeks. Seven weeks now? Okay, seven weeks. The time ticks. Tick, 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 yes. <laughs> Make your deposit. Yes, do that. Get a hold of Will for deposit information. His PayPal information is available on all the places. All the, it's on all the, wherever you find the retreat posted, all the information is there. Uh, Sharon is asking if there's a specific hotel that everyone's staying in. Um, we're going to rent a house, and then if there's a huge overflow, there's another house we can rent just a couple of doors down from there and we could just like take over the whole neighborhood and then there's other accommodations because it is a resort area there's other resorts and camping places and hotels and campgrounds and cabins and all of that stuff um, will has some of that information available on the link and then um, I would say get with will some more on that trunk and that will be helping that will be more helpful. And thank you for your question because I'm sure everybody's asking that. Kim, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you, Dan. Hello, everybody. Lovely to see you all again. Um, people who are watching, hello. To Jim, hi. I love you all. Your support is amazing. I do have a building up little list of contacts that I need to return. I will get you all, I promise, as soon as I can. Um, again, I have the honour of doing the webinar. Um, there is one particular person uh, who would like to visit you all and this is why I am wearing what I am today. Uh, this is my daughter, Kalia. We have compromised on the idea of pink and we've gone with a blue hoodie uh, simply for time <laughs> reasons. Now there's something else that uh, it's come to my attention. Uh, she constantly touches her face and I want to explain why. 
were at certain points, depending what you're speaking about, there was uh, two, two small growths of hair that she had that didn't fall out and she would never let me cut them off but she was consistently going like this with them and it was always inside the hoodie or whatever she was wearing at the time and the hoodie is very much a sign for her because she plays with it. Um, so that's why but also I had to of course make the compromise with the pink so adding this because everything is pink around Kalia and of course we have <laughs> the turtle so that is uh, why I shall just get this hoodie on so it's no longer a mystery to everybody about the body language okay Alright, that feels good. She's happy with that. So, I will bring her through and uh, I'll see you all through soon. And uh, I love you all, and so does she. Hi. Hello, Hello everybody. Hello. How are you today? I'm great. I'm always great. Awesome. Here, let me How's you everybody on, else? I'm going to put you on present so they don't have to see me. There you go. I think everybody's like doing that. well. Yeah. That's really good. That's really good. I have my turtle today. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah. But I'm getting the feeling that you've come for a special reason today. Do you have a message for everybody mm -hmm. that you're wanting to uh, to propagate out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. You guys, you guys, you're all here on planet Earth. Okay. That's something really obvious, you know. The Kalia. Yeah. But you're all spirit and you all know it. Okay. And that's all right. You know it, and you would like to know your connections to spirit, of course. Yeah. And if you do find out, great. And if you don't, you know what? It doesn't matter. Because you know what can happen? You can be here and you can be doing what you call ascending and, and you're thinking about all the other realms except the one that you're in. And you chose to come to this one that you're in. So... All this, all this communication you're looking for in other places, but that's that's not why you're here. If if you wanted to be connected to all that that idea of spirit and other dimensional communication, you'd be over there. You chose to come here. You chose to come here because you need to experience a human and all the fantastic things about humans. And also, when you come. You have your spirit groups, all of you, you know that and you have different names for them and that's okay. But when you come, your spirit group who's helping you and your spirit guides who are helping you and your higher self, they all know you're here. You made that plan. That was the plan. So they, they know. They know that they have to reach out to you and guide you with three-dimensional things. But when you're so busy looking for messages from spirit and all this, but you're looking in the wrong places because it's right in front of you. They, they want to communicate with you the way that you all agreed that you would. And I don't want you all to miss the signs. I don't want you to miss the way that you're being guided three-dimensionally. It's really important that you know that what you're here to do is to be a human. And whatever the lessons are, if you can't speak to spirit, that's great. And if spirit speaks back to you, that's great too because that's what you planned. But if you don't, it doesn't matter because if you're open, if your mind is open, 
and you understand that they know you're in a human body and they need to be able to send messages to you while you're in your human body. So this happens in lots of ways. And, and one of the things that you will call it is the universe. You, you call it speaking to the universe and seeing signs from the universe. And you know what? They happen in the beginning and they happen really, really gently. And I said this before, but it needs to be said again. The messages will come to you and they will come really, really, really gently. And when you're sitting still and you're being you on the inside, then, yeah, spirit can send you all kinds of things. You don't need to know if something important comes. You don't need to know where it came from. But do please say thank you and tell them that you love all of them. So use those moments to understand your spirit and to understand what it is you're here to do. Look around you now. When they're gentle, when they're gentle, and if you don't see them, then they become stronger. They become much stronger. They give you a chance. They give you lots of chances to see, to see the cues and see the signs to show you the direction that's for you. I'm going to keep it just to you because talking about the way this all entwines with itself, it's really, 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 really big. So I want you to think about yourselves. So when you are moving through your lives and then suddenly you're not looking here and here and here in your three-dimensional world, you're still looking up here. Oh, boy. And then they have to bring in the really tough stuff. And so then you start to find that these things, these problems are getting bigger and bigger and you might be getting sicker or you might be be getting sadder or you might be getting angry, you might be getting frustrated, all of those things and then suddenly something really terrible that on in spirit they know that if you let it go this far you agree to this and just to give you an idea of what it's like for your spirit group so that you can understand it's like oh boy, oh boy, here we go, oh is it over yet? Oh, we, we, we can't look sometimes, but we have to do it. And, and, and so when those big serious things happen and things that you feel really deeply and things that you think in reflection, reflection, you, you know, saying, looking back at something and, and you call it, uh, being wise after the fact, those kinds of things, and then that's okay. That's okay. You can do that. It, it, the point is it's the lesson to have here, and sometimes it needs to be tough because you miss it. And when it's tough, when you get through it, look back, reflect. And then you'll understand it. You will connect the dots. And so next time you'll see the dots, the dots as they happen and as they fit and as they become part of another one whose dots you're connecting with and another ten whose dots you're connecting with, all that kind of thing. So that's what I want to say to you. I, I, I want to tell you to be your three-dimensional people. And yes, value your spirit and your spirit guides and what they do, but look for your signs three-dimensionally and that will make it easier because people need to stop the concern they have if they're putting pressure on themselves to do spiritual ideas, to do the telepathy and, and moving through dimensions and all that. You guys, you know, you've all done that stuff. Really, to think about that too. You've, you've, you've all done it. So did you come here? So why have you been there? And then you come here. There's places that you think you know. So why have you been there? And then you come here. 
because it needs to be what it is here. So don't miss that point, please. Don't miss that point. Your experiences and you being guided through those experiences, it's there. It's there. Whether you know it, whether you ask for it or not, it is there. Now, if, if you guys were all somewhere, all together, and everybody had nothing going on, and there was no differences, and everybody was on the same page, what would be the point? There isn't one. You chose to come in with all differences between you because you're all going to help each other. You all, you all move towards each other in groups. That's the way it's always been on planet Earth is groups, 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 groups. Everywhere you go, groups, 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 groups. You create groups everywhere and they can become collectives and they become very powerful and when they are collectives, they gain strength. But I don't want you to deny the messages that you're getting and that you're given. And when there are things that you can't control, then please look at yourself and love yourself. You are so important when you don't know it. And if you do listen to the cues around you, you will see on your every day, you will see miracles. Because if you're open to it, that's what happens. And you see little miracles, little miracles, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And they just keep on coming. And that's the way that you know things are smooth. And sometimes you need to smooth things out. Sometimes you have to say, okay, let's smooth things out. Because this is something else. This is something else. A lot of you. It's your last time. It's your last time that you ever have to incarnate. Think about that. Think about that. Wow. And on this planet, though, how easy is it to make a mistake if you're not careful that you might have to come back and do something about it later in an incarnation somewhere? See, this is part of what it's all about. This is part of what Ascension is all about as well. It's about you loving each other and loving the differences in each other. And this is about, and this is so important, that you elevate each other, lift each other. Allow the feedback that you feel in your hearts to come and be spoken and talk and feel and touch and be be three-dimensional, hold soft things like like my turtle and touch it and, and feel it and really feel it because when you're in spirit, you, you don't feel things like this. It is so special to come to us. You do lots of things, lots of things that don't happen in spirit, lots of things that don't happen on other planets. So I, I want to remind you, from deep in my heart that I still carry with me because that's my experiences and that's how I can come to you to so please talk to each other from the heart. The hearts are important and they're connected. They're all connected in ways of DNA, in, in ways of love, in ways of spirit group incarnating together, all kinds of ways. And your belief systems, they all matter. But please love each other for your differences and appreciate that sometimes when things get difficult and you're moving around in a group of people and this, this happens lots in families and everybody thinks something different. But right from the beginning, right from the start, before you create a family, Going with the intention that you're going to love the differences between each other and that you're going to make the effort to honour each other. It's not something that needs to be harmful. There will be lessons in your closest relationships. 
but your closest relationships will also bring you the closest and quickest resolution because you're invested in those. But at the same time, for humanity also, connect to humanity, collect, collect, connect to that collective. That is very powerful as well. If you need something, if you need something emotional, not something really has to be psychic or telepathic or channeled or anything like that. But if you're feeling sad or hurt like I was, then it's very easy. It's really, really is very easy to say, okay, I'm feeling like this. And humans do this. Even people you think would never, ever, ever do this, would never, ever pray and never, ever show that they believe that there's anything else but their flesh and blood, they still pray. They still pray in their most desperate moments. And I did. And I got what I needed. My turtle. My turtle was what I needed. You all just need to find what you need and it will come when you ask. Be gentle and walk slowly and carefully and you'll see every day you will see something that will tell you move a little bit this way, move a little bit that way and the words, the words you use. When you use words and you say something like something that really touched you or something that really moved you. You know what that is? That is you being moved. You, the inside of you. When you feel something that deep, that's you, that, that's the one to connect to. So when you move or when you feel touched, this is you evolving. This is you shifting. It doesn't always have to come from spirit. The greatest kindness and sacrifices can come from the others that have incarnated with you. And when they say something to you that really touches you, tell them. And when they say something to you that's very loving, tell them. Encourage the love between each other. And encourage the differences and stay within the bounds of your integrities and what you understand to be kindness. Kindness and kindred. There's no accident that those two words exist on this planet. So just know that sometimes when spirit needs to come and kick you in the butt, it's because they're doing it with love and sometimes they have towards you a bit like this. It can be difficult on the other side to watch a spirit. They are so connected to suffer. They would much rather lessons be learned far easier, really. So that is my message. Thank you so much, Kalia. Um, <laughs> Some don't know you. Can you give just a, a quick uh, description who you are, your relationship to your mom and things? Yeah, yeah. My name is Carly Bell Wilson, and I was born on the 9th of February 1994. And when I, 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 and my mom is Kim. And I got cancer. And when I was 13, that's the first time they told me that I had it. And then I had treatment and then I went into remission and then I relapsed. And three weeks before my 18th birthday, I passed over. All and right. so now I can come and visit you this way. Yeah, you get to come this way now. Yeah, there was uh, some newer members weren't uh, weren't familiar with you, and I thought it'd be nice just to uh, to catch everybody up to speed. And thank you for your message about explaining uh, the spirit unfolding and how spirituality is expanding and 
and how important it is to still be 3D, even though we go to other 4D, 5D, whatever, 6D mm -hmm. places, it's important to remember to bring that energy here. We came to bring yes. it here. It's really important to remember that, that we didn't come here to go to some airy-fairy place. We came to bring the airy-fairy here. Yes. So a lot of people forget that focus. Yes. And and hello everybody who the new people are. Yeah, there there's several. Does um anybody in the uh, in the webinar here on side chat have any questions? Yeah. Anybody have a question for Collier uh, about clarity about what she just said about the expansion of the things? I just want to say hello to Kelia. Hello, I'm the new member here. Oh, hi. What's member. your name? My name is Omran. Uh, om Omran? Omran. Omran. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? I'm great. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm happy to, to talk to you in this way. Do you want to talk to me about something? Oh, uh, no. Like? I just want to say hello. Not yet. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Love you. Thank you too. Bless you. <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Hello, Kalia. This is Brian. Oh, where have you been? <laughs> so busy oh. with school. Oh boy. Yeah. Do you enjoy cool. that? Um, at times it can be a challenge. Uh, I'm get I'm bearing through it though. So That's cool. my question, my question to you, real quick, is. What's the one thing that you miss most about being a human on Earth? Cuddles. Oh. Skin. Yeah. It's ni it's nice to feel mum's skin. And you know, I kind of miss when my head was smooth. Kind of miss that a little bit. But there's thoughts, you know. There's there's. It's really your five senses. Yes. It's the touch and it's the taste. Sometimes we can have a smell and sometimes we get really clever and we can deliver you a smell too that reminds you of us. It's those kinds of things, yeah. Uh, My sister, she has all the ice cream and <laughs> I just sit and watch, yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, I just wanted to share that. Thank you so much, Kalia. Much love. You're welcome. Hello, Claudia. Hello. This is Christopher here. Hello, Christopher. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Thank you for your introduction. I really enjoyed it. Uh -huh. That's good, I'm glad. Yeah, I've got days where I want to go home myself. Um, but I know I need to hang on here in this 3D dimension to learn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. No, Chris, can I tell you something, please? Please, yes. All, all, all the people who are here and all the people who are listening, you know what? They're pretty amazing because they're starting to understand that there's a balance. And nobody's going, oh, no, 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 no. It's, there is spirit. And that is becoming more and more accepted. For people who never used to believe in something after death, that's something that almost doesn't exist any longer on Earth. Everybody understands that there is an afterlife. It's an intuitive thing. I shouldn't say everybody. It's a majority. But that too, that's something I want to say. Sorry, I'm getting off the subject. But this is, this is something that's important. I see, I see. There's so much in the governments that's going on. And and nobody says very nice things about them. And some of them are very nice. And some of them, most of them, they really, really, really do want to do the best thing. But sometimes they don't have all the information. And so that can bring them to making decisions that aren't that don't seem very kind. But a lot of them really are kind because you know what? They wanted to stand up and they wanted to speak for the people and speak for you all. 
and some of them they get so high up and they sit with themselves sometimes and they can feel shame and they can feel remorse and their consciences sometimes they don't sleep sometimes they have anxiety sometimes they get depressed and people forget that they're people and they put on the face that they do and they say the things that they do it doesn't mean that they always really like it themselves so that's something to about being three-dimensional human understand most of you just like you Chris even though you think about being elsewhere and you will want to be elsewhere sometimes it's okay to be here and be part of what is making this world and this planet what it is and if people like you and people who are listening to this they are the ones who have what you call the voice to make the difference to make the change and everybody knows that and not everybody does it with with all the information they have available and you know what sometimes they don't even have all the information that is available there's so much there's so many of you and that's one reason also that your politicians love them for their differences as well there's all kinds of people and spirits and incarnate life right down to the animals they all can become public issues democratic issues it's something that you need to learn how to admire and see the best in people and those that are doing what you would typically call something ethical or something moral they have their reasons for doing it so please try to be a little kinder about these people because they do care about you and there's only a few who are greedy and selfish and they end up being whittled out anyway and that's going to happen more and more and more the governments are going to change and so are the institutions like your schools and your banks oh boy yeah there's changes coming you don't need to feel that you're at the mercy of all of this this is all the creation that was made on earth by those who live on it so I want you to understand when you're looking at your three-dimensional lives in front of you and not the stuff that's going on out and around you trust that that's all doing what you want it to do they looking at the people who are running your world and making the changes that need to be made and honoring those who do stand up does that answer the question thank you so much Kai you're welcome I love, I love you. you Kalia how are you holding up over there are you doing well do you have more yeah. um, that you would like to share or is there something else that needs to go on yeah, that that is something else I'd like to talk about. If if is that okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. Plenty of time. I just wanted to know if, if later there's another being that wanted to come because we weren't clear at the going in if we were going to do that. So if you are sharing the time, then I need you to be aware of that. That's up to you. Okay. Well then, for now we won't worry about it. Then uh, what? What? What is your message? Uh, what else would you like to share? I wanted to speak about passing over. Is that okay? Sure, it is because people are interested in those things. Yeah, I I I don't want I don't want anybody who who's near somebody who's in the process of doing that to be upset where there's no need to be. Um, okay when when you pass over and I know this is something that, that that's very interesting to humans and sometimes as a human you, you can experience what it was like to die 
Okay, I, I, that word is not an accurate description, but it is one that everybody on the earth knows what it means. So, when you do move, when you do come out of this body and move on to the spirit, and you do receive guidance, this is the time that you will finally see the spirit that has been propping you up and holding you and guiding you. Now, if you if you want to, you can ask them to be the ones to come to you and to take you and bring you through to the golden light. Now, getting there. What happens between the moment that you leave and the moment you go through the golden light? All of this is your creation. All of this is your free will. So what that means is when you do pass, and and you know what? Lots of ways to cross over are very peaceful. One thing is drowning. That's 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 a surprisingly peaceful way to pass over. There's others. Usually, ones if if someone is passing over and they're in in nature somewhere, that can be very peaceful too, because you start to melt into the surroundings. And if you're out in nature when it happens, you you kind of connect with all the surroundings of nature. And then that's what you break up with you, and that's lovely. Then you suddenly realize how beautiful the birds sound and what the trees felt like and those kinds of things. Because you know what? Almost all of you will look back. There aren't many who will just go, because you have love. So what do you do? You move out. You realize that you're out, you turn around and you look and what's what's going on? What's happening? If this happens really fast, it could take a while for you to catch up, for spirit to catch up and say, Oh, 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 I don't I don't have a body. Oh, oh, okay. Where's this person? Where's that person? Take some time. It really does take some time. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long it takes, as long as it's for the best of the spirit. The spirit guides will come, if need be, and take them. Now, this is where you get earthbound spirits. Spirits that will refuse. Spirits that will say, no, I'm not going. And so what happens is there's an evolutionary spiral, okay? Now, for the belief systems, I'm going to say to you that down here would be a lower vibration and up here is the higher vibration. Now, wherever you vibrate on this evolutionary energetic spiral is dictated by your spiritual maturity as you leave. What I mean by that is at that moment you realize and you are able to grasp the concept of what it is you've been doing, why, and what has led to that. And you can be reviewing over a thousand lifetimes in that moment and deciding, was that enough, was it not? Did I leave this undone? And I should have. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, yeah, spirit does it. But when they come out, and then the guides come and they say, no, I'm not ready to leave this this being. I'm not ready to leave. Let's say I'm not ready to leave this baby. I'm not ready to leave this mother. I'm not ready to leave this father. So they hang around. They hang around and they become what's called earthbound. And people think earthbound spirits are bad. No, no. Don't, I, I don't want you to think in good and bad. I want you to think of evolution. 
you come in at the bottom of the evolutionary spiral, if that's where your vibration is. If it's something sinister or if it is something that you deliberately set out to do when there was no purpose, it wasn't part of an agreement, then you are going to come in on this level. Let me share this with you. If you have come in to incarnate on this planet and one of your agreements is that you are going to be a serial killer. I used, I used to study those when I was alive. But if you if you if you come in when 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 there's been a serial killer and they have they have sacrificed themselves. They whether they have been caught and punished or not, they have sacrificed themselves and sometimes that was the job they were here to do and guess what? They jump, they jump up the evolutionary spiral because they did what they agreed to do with all the individuals that they harmed and their families and the ripple effect all for a purpose, a reason to change part of your world. Sometimes sacrifices come in this way. And yet there are others who do revolve at a lower frequency. Beneath that are the ones who will just remain earthbound out of love and because they are attached to those who are grieving. This is a fine, fine balance between someone who is grieving and the spirit who is experiencing the grief. And grief is a normal process for the humans. And yes, if they understand what spirit does, then it can seem like they can have some meaning, some meaning to what happened, knowing that they're not gone. That's really, really good. Sometimes the grief keeps them close though. It keeps them close to the one that is grieving. They can't leave. And sometimes when the tears stay too long and the grieving doesn't move, the earthbound spirit will just sit and stay. Grief can keep a spirit very earthbound. And one reason why you will find that there will be signs around you at times when you are grieving that it's time to move on just a little is because it's it's way past you that this spirit needs to get to where it's going. So there needs to be some kind of surrender, a surrender of the energy that has <coughs> left your realm. This is okay, but I would like to make you aware of that. Grief can keep spirits earthbound. Now, at the same time, once they do cross over, arrive to the reality that their free will has created for them, wherever that may lay on the evolutionary spiral, that is all, all, all dealt with there. Once they get through the light, this is where typically when you hear people, they talk about that there's relatives or even pets and things like that ready to greet them. Yes. If this is your belief, yes. If you believe that you're going somewhere else, then that's where you will go. If you feel like that you are such a bad person and, and your belief sister tells you you need to go to hell, you're going to you just go to whatever you think hell is. Don't, don't do hell, guys. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. It's just a part of the evolutionary spiral. One of the other things I'd like to say to you, music. Music is like prayer. To spirit. If you want to honor a spirit, then play the music that belongs to the spirit. It's very powerful because it is made up of frequency. It reaches vibrating energies that are happening all around you and it includes those that you love. So when you listen to this music, allow yourself to be uplifted as well. 
allow yourself to connect. If you know it is something that touched them, then please let it touch you. You connect. And that's lovely. So please keep praying as you do, or talking as you do, or thinking as you do, and loving as you do. But there are little gifts that you can give to spirit. And that's one of them is with the music because it is like a prayer to them. That's it. Wonderful. Thank you, Kalia. Uh, Sharon has a, a question for you, if you're ready. Yes. Hi, Kalia. Thank you so much for coming back today. Um, Hi. Information's been amazing. I just had a question regarding the... Well, can you give us some examples of ways that spirit can help human beings um, and how we can best be in the receptive mode? Or is it more like you're in a better place when you don't need the help? <laughs> you can just clarify some of those points. I think I understand the question. Okay. So, so these little indicators, I think you're talking about seeing the indicators where spirit is talking to you and nudging you, gentle nudges, gentle nudges. While it stays gentle, that is ideal. That's, that is what your spirit group wishes for you. They don't want you to experience great hardship unless you have absolutely asked for it before you arrive here. So what was the second part of the question, Sean? How we can best be in the receptive mode to receive help? Ah, or if that's we need. yeah. That's really, really easy. Because you just have to be yourself. You just have to be you, with nothing else. If you're just being you, and you have cereal in the morning, and there be something on on the cereal box. It can be that subtle and you might read the cereal box and you might go, hmm. And for some reason that changes the decision that you will make in the future at some point. It could be any time. It's those kinds of little things to begin with. Little things that you see, little things that you feel. You might you might walk past the house and have the feeling about a house. And then one day you might meet someone and then you realize they live in this house. It's those kinds of things. It's even sometimes when you do something kind for people. I, I love to watch what you guys call random acts of kindness. I love those because they are also part of agreement completion and when they're not, you're loving anyway. You're not creating yourself more problems to have to deal with. You're always loving, loving. So if you just do be, be kind to a stranger, just a smile, just a shake of the hand. Uh, eye contact is really good. Eye contact is really, really good. That, imagine, if you have been in lifetimes, but you have been in constant battle with this being. And finally, finally, you said hello, and then you said, have a good day. You both smiled. Ooh, there's that one gone. Don't need to worry about that one again. See, that was the person who was a neighbor that you were at battle with. So something that simple. If you were looking for the acts of kindness, the acts of kindness will look for you. That's how it will become more simple. And it will also come back to you far stronger and deeper. And you will become very good at understanding what they are. Because guess what? One day you might feel 
I'm going to just be really nice to this person and they might turn around and they might say, oh, thank you so much. So I've been having a really difficult day. And you might say, oh, I hope things get much better for you. Sometimes you might feel like you want to say, do you want to talk about it? And the timing will be right. And sometimes it can just be that this person needed to talk and in that talk was something that you knew the answer to because you mastered it or the other way around. Right there. You've completed another agreement and you have given love and received it. Use that as your compass. Being receptive means having an open heart. And also being giving means having an open heart. Does that answer the question? Yeah, that was excellent. And I just want to give a shout out to my uh, favorite cousin, Gay John. It was his birthday today and he's passed a few years ago. But Oh, that's so lovely that you're thinking of him. Oh, Sean. Yes, that is so lovely. This is something else too. Can I tell you? When people when people you love and they and they pass and I understand people want to get on with their lives on that are still incarnated and that's the purpose, that's the idea. But it's always nice for spirit to know that you remember them sometimes, just every now and again. Just Remember, like you just did, Sean, you know it's a birthday. That's beautiful. That's really lovely. It's those kinds of things. Just don't forget them because they're always there. And then you're still always talking to them. But your loved ones are there. Why do you not say hello to them? Why do you not love them the same way? Is there anything else? That's it for me. Thanks again, Kalia. You're welcome. I believe Amran had a question. Uh, yes, I do. Now I have oh, I have two questions. I will, I will ask just one of them. Um, it's about... Let me see. I, I have to choose one of them. Okay, it's about this community. Now, huge things will happen in 2027, right? And how will this com communities which are created, how will they turn out at that time? How how big will will they be? Will, will it be like will it be like there there will be people who are who have developed the great communities, spiritual communities at that time? And how will everyone? How will spirituality be at that time for people who are who who are already were waking up to to all this stuff about what is going on 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 Earth. Mm. That's what I'm curious about yes. to know. Yes, it's another step towards unification. There's something that's really important here. When when you have big groups and you have big beliefs and it's very, it's very much a challenge to bring together big groups and they all have the same belief systems. Now then, technically, they would be a huge group. It's not likely on the planet Earth that you're all going to have the same belief systems at the same time in spirit at once. In that short period of time, it, it's a it's a big leap. Now, if it does happen, then it's unification. It's not just unification of you as a human. And by that stage, if that was going to happen, you would have to have advanced yourselves so much. Now, there's only one way that that's going to happen and that's something that I know you all hope for. 
spiritually it will be very powerful because then what you're creating is powerful spiritual collectives they are also a human collective that will come together now the magnitude of that experience simply on a spiritual base when you understand that for each individual you are coming in for your own different lessons you're coming in because you agreed to be different you agreed to do something that was going to teach you a unique lesson so really if that was going to happen I would even suggest to you that it's not going to be this earth that it's going to happen on it's not the purpose of this planet it is too variable it has much going on Gaia is a busy 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 entity and more than you are aware of at the moment now that I'm not wanting to instill fear it is simply just not necessary for you to have all those details at the moment but can you see how complex it could be for that to happen of course you, the goal of all is that we want all unification all love connection distinction will virtually melt away so spiritually you almost become purely spiritual beings there is not not much need for mass when you reach that that level so it's likely on earth that you're just going to end up with large groups with different belief systems and the fact whether or not you can embrace them at that time remains a a bit of a mystery because it's not highly probable so yeah I'd say to you of course if you want to manifest if you want to believe and if that serves you then it's important that you continue on that path so please just keep going what will be will be in your particular lifetime yes yes thank you very much thank you you're welcome hello Kalia this is Sarah how are you hi Sarah hi thank you for how coming you? today I'm doing well it's that's good cool, I heard you. different I'm, that's good. I'm glad. I yes, it, yeah. it's um, it's the energies they go in and out. There's the fluctuation of energies. I'm very sensitive to it. Yeah. Um, yes, between the energies of the galactics coming to the earth, uh -huh. <laughs> the aligning of the different bodies of planets. It's it's mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Yes. That I is a lot for a three-dimensional human, yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, I wanted to ask because I've been noticing uh, spirits that are from a distant past. Yeah. Coming to me, whether mm -hmm. I know them or not. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering why does that happen to people when 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 spirits who have been long gone come back to someone who is totally un, unaware of them mm -hmm. does it feel good yeah it's just that's why that's why because it feels good you've reached the point where you have the understanding and they reach out and you feel them no matter how minimally you feel them, you, you recognize them. That's lovely. That's great. That's really good. It's really nice. But don't forget what you're here to do. Sarah, lots of, lots of spirit works with your spirit. Lots of other people's spirit realms work with your spirit realms. And this is why you're able to do what you do and this is why you get the support that you do and and I want to say to you please don't underestimate yourself 
Everyone has their uniqueness. And for you, your connections are very strong and they run very deep. And so what you do, what you are doing with your toning in healing ideas and, and I, I listen sometimes by the way, I really like it. But this is something that you are ready for. You spiritually, remember I said a lot of you are coming just for the last time just to finish up just a bit of a clean up. So you're one of the ones that this could be a choice you have because like you said you are feeling connections from behind from your past but you're not letting them overwhelm what you have in front of you. Do you see the difference? Yes. So it's nice that you feel them as long as it's not taking you off your 3D path. Oh, I don't believe that's what they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. I was just interested because you were saying the spirits that stay behind. Mm -mm -mm. What, what can happen? I would see right now. I would see right now if that was the case. Well, of course, what can happen is that they go over and they create the existences and their ideas of their heavens or whatever you want to call it. But they can come back and they can visit. Uh -huh. they, they can come back and just give you a little message or they might show you something that will make you think of them. And they go again. They're not earthbound ones. They can all come back and visit. Oh yeah. Okay, so the spirits who are coming to me, they went to wherever they were supposed to go energetically, what we consider heaven, and then they're just coming back yep. to visit. Yep. Okay, I see. There's nothing earthbound around you, Seth. Uh huh. Mm -mm. Uh uh. You and B.I. do what you do, if there was. Okay. <laughs> um, do you feel like any one of them have a message at the moment for me? Mm. The, perce the perception is, and, th and this is this is the way that they communicated it to me. The perception is that you have great support coming from your past, and it has culminated to now mm -hmm. because what you have chosen in front of you also involves many other spirit groups, spirit guides, higher selves, humans as you're moving forward, making big shifts, making big movements, touching and loving in a big way. Mm -hmm. So all of this from the past is coming to say, well done, keep going, this is great. All of this, when you come to all of this, it's going to just flow, it's just going to work. It's a sign that you got all of this to look forward to <laughs> and, and to look forward to. I'm loving your energy, by the way. <laughs> You're welcome. It's beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Paul, yeah? I'd like to take a moment to uh, let your mom have a drink and then consider if there's another being that would like to come through today. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I, I, I'll, I'll go because there's someone. Okay. And and then I can I can I can let mom have a drink. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming and thank you for sharing all the great information. It's really, really, really good. You're welcome. Love you, Kelly. Can I, can, can I just you, say Kelly. something first? Can we all just do something together? Sure. Okay. Everybody, you can mute or not, it doesn't matter, but I want you to do it and I'd like to hear it if you can. I'm going to sing a little song, okay? All right. Great. It goes, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. 
And you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy, and you know I clap your hands. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay, I'll go. <laughs> Bye, All right. Bye, Bye, love you, Kalia. Bye, you, Kalia. Bye, Kalia. Namaste. So sweet. <laughs> Well, my birds are sounding off. They like that, too. My birds are very happy with it. <laughs> yeah. And the dog. Welcome back, Kim. Would you like a drink and a cool down? Oh, yeah. Please. <laughs> okay. Would you like to go off cam for just a moment and get into a cool down mode and return? Yeah, just for one moment. That would be good. I need to okay. move. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you want to go off cam for a moment before you do that. Thank you, Kim. That was amazing. <laughs> no problem. And thank yes, you, Kelly. Thank, thank you, both of you. That was just beautiful. <laughs> Welcome. I'll be back in a moment. All righty. All right. <laughs> yeah, give her a moment to get uh, transferred over. I know uh, the hoodie's allowed to is used to transfer all that energy and stuff, but the heat builds up, and yes, just exactly. after, after a little while, you just gotta get some air. So mm. and we don't want to dehydrate her. Yeah. yeah, she's in a hot climate. Yeah. <laughs> so. Wonderful. Hello, everybody. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if anybody else needs a drink or anything, you want to call this an intermission. Everybody want to you know, take three or four minutes to do whatever they need to do. When you see the lights flashing on and off, yeah. it's time to come back. Yeah, let's give them some light to flash right here. All right. <laughs> I love you, Dan. <laughs> The letter of the day is seven. <laughs> the letter of the day is seven? All right. The word is love. No, ah, she's back. That didn't take long at all. That took no time at all. All right. You're still muted, though, Kim. You went You went all haywire. There you go. That's why we traded in the pink hoodie for the blue one. <laughs> it was yeah. the time. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you've had a opportunity to get some air on you. You're good. Yeah. All right. Hmm. What's the What's the next thing going on, Kim? Do you have an idea? Yeah. Yeah. Who do you think it might be? You want to go more? Hindu. <laughs> Hindu. <laughs> we know who Brian wants. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just getting ready to today. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. All right. In your, uh, this in your just time. Nice to some of you and some of you know, so <laughs> enjoy. Okay. I'll see you soon. What time is it? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, it's 10.10 my, my time, so uh, about 30, 40 minutes maybe. Yeah. And then uh, then some blessings and then close after that. Blessings. This is Endu. Hello. Hello. Hello, Endu. Welcome to the webinar. Hello, Dan. It's lovely to be here. How is everybody? Well, I think everybody's in pretty good, pretty good sorts. Yep, everybody's giving positive indication. Very good. 
How may I help? Well, wondering if you have a, a message that you would like to share with everybody uh, for the, you know, the reason you've come today, see the whole group. Mm. Yes. I think it's time to talk about goddess energy. Earlier in this year, in fact, late in your last year, I did a deliverance and I spoke to you all about the impact the feminine and the masculine would have on your planet as you go through this year. Now at the moment, the way that the Galacti is set up, it is perfect for you all to acknowledge the goddess energy. Now, this does not exclude the men. This is actually of great benefit to the men. I will elaborate on that. But I would firstly like to define what a goddess looks like to me. Human females, they have a great range of emotions. They also have a great gift of nurturing. Now this is something that's very precious. I don't believe that it is nurtured in the females enough to enhance upon their ability to nurture. In recent times, this has been a little undervalued. It's time to look at it again. It's time to see the goddess, the woman, as all of them are, all of them have the goddess that resides within. Whether or not they project the full ability, the full reality, the full expression of the goddess that resides within them, now that is something that it's time to nurture. Men, gentlemen, find your goddesses please. If you are in partnerships, you, hmm, Interestingly enough, if you become in touch with your feminine energy and balance that out with the masculine, you can actually stimulate God to your partner. It is in the way that you address them. It is in the way that you compliment them, the way in which you nurture them, the way in which you give. And if you do so with congruency and grace and love, what will happen is the goddess will appear. Remind her she is a goddess. She is sensual. She is a creature that you are attracted to. Tell her you are attracted to her. Tell her that for all her beauty, she will always be more than enough. Watch as the goddess emerges. Watch as she starts to demonstrate ideas of herself that she perhaps had long forgotten. The goddess actually begins to be addressed when they are a child with the male energy that is around them and the way in which they are allowed to behave. And I am not speaking of sexual experiences here. I am speaking of flirtation. Men can shut their daughters down very quickly, deny them their sensuality. Their sexuality is something that will develop throughout their teen years and often through their 20s when they are very young. They are still very feminine. They display this. They display it in the way in which they create. And sometimes you will have a child that will demonstrate what you would traditionally call interests of the opposite sex. This does not matter. Encourage this child to be on its journey, whatever that turns into, and love that child. Now, whether they are to be a goddess, a god, or an amalgamation of both, they're both important. But these little girls, if you treat them as women, and they will give you what you call those daddy eyes and look for daddy's approval and look for daddy's love and look for daddy to say, you look so pretty today. 
It's those simple things that can change the futures of your daughters. And sometimes it needs the fathers to access their feminine energy so that their hearts are open enough to reach their children. There are times when fathers unfortunately need to wear and paint another face as they move through their days and they disconnect with their heart at times. It is sad but it is not a tragic unchangeable event. The men on your planet do not understand the ability that they have to bring the best out in their women. Women want to be free. Women want to love men. Women want to provide for men. The true woman, the true goddess is effortless. She just is. If you want to encourage her to become a sensual being, tell her. Tell her. You find this particular part of her body very alluring. When she speaks such as this, she is sensual. When she moves, there's something in her movement that drives you crazy. Give her the feedback. Remind her. Remind her what resides there. Watch as you magically create the goddess that resides within your lover. Your feminine energy here. This is a very special place that it may come into play and bring out the best in your beautiful goddess and those around you. Always make your partner feel that they are special and the one and only. But where you are in families, where you have sisters, where you have mothers, remind them that they are feminine. Tell them. They're pretty. That colour suits them. It's lovely to see them when they do this. Thank your mothers for loving you, for nurturing you. All of this feedback that males can give to the females all around them will enhance the goddesses that are within them and you will receive the benefits of the goddesses no matter what the relationship. Your mother will feel wonderful about herself because you thanked her for birthing you. Probably a thought she never even had. Remind her of the magical way in which you were created and the gratitude you have that she bared you. Honour her. On your birthday, honour the day for her as well. As you move through to your sister's your relationship between your sisters. Yes, at times, of course, all of these relationships can be troublesome. Please don't focus on that. This is a way for you to heal them if you choose. However, for all of you, there are females all around you that you can help to blossom. Bring them to fruition. Allow them to be the loving kind and often passive because they can trust. If a woman can trust a man, you will see the best she has. I also want to ask you all to explore ways in which you can open up the sensual and the sexual goddess. Who benefits from this also? The men. That the women feel as if they are expressing themselves. It is also much very like a creation of a painting, a creation of a mold. You see the statues of honour of the females in various places on your planet. The men, they worship the women. It is not a one way street, my friends. For this is another situation where as you give, you shall receive many times over. So look to your women, beautiful women, and love them and enhance them. That is my message.
That's wonderful. Thank you, Andu. Does anybody have something they'd like to say about the goddess energy? Hello there, uh, Andu. This is Brian. Hello, Brian. How are you? Good, good. Just been so busy. Mm, you sound tired, my friend. Yeah, I'm doing okay. I yeah. um, I I always love the goddess energy. I always I'm in so in favor of women's empowerment, finding the goddess within themselves. Yeah. That's the one message that I've always I love. That's why I love talking to many females. Uh, I love feeling their energy, and I, it always brings a smile to my face when I see them empower themselves. Yes. When they move from victimhood into empowerment, self empowerment, mm, yes. and they take command. It's yes. like you know how we have on the planet lost a lot of the uh, masculine energy, but I love how the females take more command, take charge. Mm. It's brilliant. Yes, yes, it's empowerment. It is also something that we would like to see integrated into your education systems and perhaps at some point it will be. But of course, I do not mean to segregate the importance of the men here. I want to show the men the ability that they have to enrich the women and then as they become in their fullness of goddess, you are the one who reaps the benefits. This yes. is a cyclic a cyclic consistent energy reciprocal form of love magical there is not enough of that that goes on thank you Brian for pointing yes. that out but you noticed that and thank you my friend for loving the female humans very much so and to a day when um, it'll be taught in the school systems where have a class that really deals with looking at thyself um, a, lo a class on love, loving thyself. What a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Indu. Much love. You're welcome. Much love. Can I just make a point here? Yes, it is timely for the feminine energy at the moment, but I would also like to speak about the male energy and the role that I'm asking them to play at the moment. In essence, you are energies that work together. Ideally, you want them to work in balance. At times, it moves like this, and at times, it moves like that. This is one of the times, let us use the yin-yang symbol. We're pushing down on energy here. We're pushing down on energy. Men can lift this energy up. It can become a much more harmonious sharing of space. Now for women, if they are truly honest with themselves, they will see that within them that they want a man who does play a traditional role. Regardless of the role that the woman plays, this is actually where the subservient dominant idea comes in, the master-slave idea comes in, when it comes in as purity, in a form of trust. When trust abounds between a couple and whatever it is you agree upon and that is fulfilled, you are going to receive the best of each other and you are going to give the best of each other. This is going to help you. If you are beings who have come together to learn, you will resolve more quickly. If you are beings who are here to be lifetime partners, you will move together easily. Things will flow. They are always changeable. However, the individual energies do not have to change. They are living creations of vibration and frequency as they are and together always with the one you are for a reason there is less than there. however all that aside love overrides it all anything is possible where you have love and trust in a relationship for the men yes you want to be providers too. You want to be able to see your women taken care of. You may get pleasure out of simply watching her eat. 
because you are a provider. There are interesting ways for you to feel like a man, for you to find your masculine every day. And as you do that, and perhaps you are watching her eat, and she sees you glimpse out of the corner of her eye that you're watching her, immediately she will respond. It will be subconscious. It's a dance. It's a dance of delight, and you are all built so beautifully for it. So, yes, I just would like to remind the men of their roles here. It is also very important and your needs will be met as well. Is there more questions? Yes, Indu, this is Sarah. Welcome back. Hello, Sarah. How are you? <laughs> good, good. I have a question on what you would say to women who can feel their power but sometimes... Uh, go back within themselves because it's not something that is readily appreciated in mm -hmm. their environment. Mm. Yes. Yes. There are several things at play here, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Timing is important for many women. And this is one reason why I am bringing up that now is a wonderful time to become connected to your goddess. When you become connected to your goddess, we do not want to expose her to harm. We want her to flourish in the comfort and safety of who she is. Now, part of the goddess is knowing where to be the goddess and where not to be the goddess. There is the tigress, the tigress that lives within you. And she resides. She is what you typically will draw on for strength. What the kind of strength that you are talking to me about here. Human female strength is actually quite soft. It is actually vulnerable unless you are very much hooked into a passion. Now, passion is a whole other vibration. If the strength is driven by passion, then it is a heart energy. What happens when you come from the heart? You become relatable. This is not about one dominating the other. This is about you bringing out the best in each other. So please do not fear you projecting the true goddess within you because what that actually means is that you are allowing your ability to love, to empower, to nurture, to elevate intimacy. There is no being on your planet who cannot respond in some way, shape or form to such emotion. It's so intense and it is so attractive. Sarah, you have the body language. I will nail you on this. <laughs> I have just learned what that means. You have the ability. You are built as a goddess. Every time you look in the mirror, you see your goddess. Every time. Release her. She feels strong because you've been packing her back down in her box. Allow her to peek out every now and again. More and more you will begin to see those around you drawn to your goddess because she is kind, she is loving, she is sexy. Oh, all the wonderful scenes about human females. Who can deny that? Who will shut down on love? Who will shut down on passion? Who will shut down on sensuality? No one. The goddesses respect the goddesses in each other. You are a collective of your own. You are all incredibly made of the ability of the qualities of the goddess. So do not fear it, my friend. Do not fear it. 
Just simply allow it at the time and the place and the way in which it will be appreciated. And those others, other goddesses that are around you, make room for their goddess also. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you for your beautiful message. Wonderful. You're welcome. Greetings, Endo. Um, I was wondering if um, this um, this anti-woman thing that's going on with political people in the U.S. and probably other countries too, but um, all these. Um, political people who are um, attacking the feminine, if this is part of um, making the shadow, um, bringing it up into the light so that we can, um, in mass, uh, clear it? Yeah. If, that... you look at, if you look at the recent history of women on your planet, there are many sad stories to tell. They have fought strong battles and they have fought hard and they have lost and won. It is time, as I said, once again for the goddesses to rise. The difference is it's about enhancing your femininity. It is not about denying it. That is the difference of this time of the evolution on your planet. This is truly about being a female and all that encompasses. Not just those who believe that they earn should earn more currency for what they do. It should be equal to the men. These are all obvious. Yes, 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 yes and yes. But if you have goddesses coming to address this issue rather than angry ladies, what is going to succeed and what is not. The goddess will move you all forward in unison and the men cannot help but respond. So yes, as you speak of, there is distinction on many of your countries but as many especially of the I will say the women in your eastern countries where they are very much quietened, they are very harshly punished for minor things now behind closed doors. These goddesses are actually some of the strongest and they are going to make the greatest difference. The ones in your western countries, they already have been given the voice. But it is time now to lift the male idea. It is time now to become the goddesses so that they may elevate the males. The males will elevate the females. It will be the natural cause. But anger, frustration, none of this is going to bring what they want. It's simply upsetting. And if they are honest with themselves as they go home and they sit in their furniture, and in the quieter moments, there will be a silent voice in there that wishes they didn't have to behave in that way. The goddess does not want that. The goddess wants to change while she flourishes, not denying, not emulating masculine energy. There's no need. So that is my answer, my friend. What... Um what I've done, because it's disturbing to me, um, the aggression that some of these very weak people are putting out, is I've created um, a record crystal grid for um, the feminine and for the masculine, two separate ones um, that I energize. Is this part, um, is this um, helping um, this energy? I mean, in one way I believe it is, but wow, the nastiness is really pretty bad. Yes. Yes. Interestingly, women on your planet can be renowned for this. 
this is not this is an extreme this is as if what you would call war generally when it's in the hands of men it involves weaponry when it's in the hands of women it generally involves the words whatever it is you choose to do with the use of your grids with the use of your crystals if you do it with the intention and it is built by the goddess within you with the intention of peace this aggression concerns you yes your goddess sees this does not resonate with your goddess so as you build your grid build it with that in mind allow the goddess within you allow her mm. allow her and allow her to interact with your crystals and then it will be perfect and allow it to become less troublesome for you look for the femininity in this whole idea and if you may give feedback if you are given the opportunity you now know how to do it does that answer your question it does thank you you're welcome Amran, were you going to ask oh, a question? Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, well, my question is is about. Um, I have I have a dream of of like building structures in future, building geometrical structures which can help help humanity, help all of us, help Earth to to raise its its vibrations and all of our vibrations. Um, how? Can you say something about how it can help balancing our our goddess and god energies, our yin and yang energies? Um, I feel like it's 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 very important, like building pyramids, similar to what they did in in the ancient times, to raise the vibration of earth. Um, yes. Can you tell us things about yeah in about this? Yes, yes. There was, there's a couple of things I would like to address here. Firstly, my friend, the pyramid idea, I'm pleased to hear you talk about that. They are very powerful, you know that. Now, that is another subject all in itself. I won't go too much further into that. I would suggest to you here, the, any period, pyramids that you choose to build in this in this setting, make them places of worship, make them places of healing, make them places of leveling, becoming neutral, places to understand themselves. Now, nature, Mother Nature, Gaia, she does not often create harsh, sharp edges as your housing is. There are few places in the world where the abodes that you live in actually have no harsh corners. Nature is not created from harsh degree turns. While you build these communities and the abodes, I would ask you to involve your goddesses in the creation. She instantly is going to be able to present to you something curvaceous because she is curvaceous. Nature is curvaceous. Now the men have the knowledge to put these buildings together. They can actually take the curvaceous idea and manifest it, build it, find a way to create it. Now this is going to resonate with Gaia. This is more flowing of energies throughout your abodes. This is what you want. You want to connect with nature. You want to live in peace. So whatever you do, do it together. Do it, you set the words yin and yang. If that is the way that is important for you to understand, then that is perfect. Use it. But if you want, again, yin and yang, there is nothing sharp around that symbol. So I'm going to ask you to look at the planet that you live upon 
if you move forward to create these communities and emulate the nature that is around it. Now, I have seen these go to elaborate extremes and that is fine. That is the way that that abode was meant to be. But they do not need to be something that is highly technical. In fact, there will be even when you get to the point of being able to create being such as such buildings you will also have the knowledge and access to the technology to bring through all the non combustible energies and utilize them into these communities as well this is going to change the value of the currencies also this leads us off into another area this does not matter at this moment so I would say to you, yes, use the pyramid idea as places of worship or healing. The home roads, keep them of a curvaceous nature and you will find harmony and involve, as I said, the feminine and the masculine in this creation. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. But yeah, the thing is that, that um, I am... I was told that I am building structures in astral, like building cities and so on. But I, I'm, I'm not so much into into studying in, you know, university and all these schools they have here. We have here on Earth. I really don't like it. I'm. It's just not me. I just like to to make to do my things, um, alone. Like not, yeah. I, I like to be much more into spirituality and other beings and learn from them. So, well, well, the knowledge from from this uh, from these other aspects of me come to me when when I in well when I will be building these structures in future and will I even be building them in future or is it just something that I'm <laughs> that I'm feeling right now? It's potential, my friend. You are talking about potential. There's always a probability. You are always looking at variables. There is free will. There is choice. You may look at this idea in a couple of your years forward and this will not resonate with you any longer or it may become the complete opposite. Whatever it is, your belief system is giving you the feedback about the technology and the buildings that you are creating. Of course, you may bring this to the earth and create it here should you choose to do so. But this is entirely up to you. This is you as the manifesto. This is you with the idea. The question is, are you going to carry it through? Are you going to enjoy the process? How do you want it to look when you're done? I would also say to you at first, be advised if you are completed on the other project. There is a reason for this. I would ask you to seek within you, sit with yourself and seek the answer to this. What is it you are doing and why? But yes, of course, any knowledge that any human has on any level most definitely, it can be manifested on this earth. Okay, great, great. Thank you. That was just what I wanted to, to ask you about. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Love you. Hello, Endu. I'm Sharon, and I was, oh. hoping, <laughs> I was hoping you could speak to those who do not identify with one gender or another, or those who identify with both. Um, and or those who are asexual as well. If you could, you know, give them a message about embracing the goddess within them as well, that would be wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Let me begin with the asexual. There is no resonance there. That is fine. They're neutral. They do not need to shift from that. Sean. All these creations, all these manifestations, all these beings, they are there for a purpose. Now the neutral beings have a purpose. Look back in your history where neutral beings were created and you know them as uniques. They weren't naturally created, no. 
they were physically modified. But then you have this naturally, people who come in, they choose to be asexual. That is absolutely fine because they are neutral, they are not causing division, they don't need to tilt one way or the other. They will go with what you call the flow. Now, the bisexual people, Sean, this may shock many of you, but most of you are actually born bisexual. Now this is a limiting label and it's not something that I want you to identify with. It is simply that it is a concept until you are told there is separation and until you hit puberty and you start to understand what it is you're drawn to and if you have had experiences with both, enhance the bisexual energies, remain who you were when you were born and live as such. The idea here, Sean, is that love is what's important, not the sex that you love, not the gender that you love. So for those in the bisexual mode, as far as bringing out the goddess, generally that will just simply mean they will use less of their masculine. That is all. That is all. They will spend more time on their appearance. They will spend more time looking on the outside what they feel on the inside. That is a feminine trait you decorate. So that is most likely to be what, how that will manifest for the bisexual and thus they truly are more tilted one way or the other. Now when you come to same gender, the gay man obviously, if he does feel the feminine connection in his homosexuality then yes, he's going to also become more feminine in what he decorates himself as. And also, the goddess is going to enjoy this. These beings often do this behind closed doors. They're much more likely to step outside those doors at the moment. Now, for the female and female gay population, they are going to have a magical experience if they understand that they are two goddesses together and they have double the power. Mm -mm. They can elevate each other just the same way that they would another that they love. There is still the masculine energy there for the times in which they need to use it. But the goddess energy is going to be absolutely enhanced. It has already begun. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Um, and like I said, those who cannot seem to identify with the idea of either gender. Yes. Thank yes. You. Is, I'm sorry. Is this the asexual people you were speaking of? Um, no. Uh, they call it non-binary now. <laughs> There's lots ah, of new ah. names and new identities for people to try to new labels, yes. themselves, yes. Uh, so there are so those who say that they can't identify with society's idea of either gender and they may be uncomfortable trying to embrace something they do not understand. Yes. This is about self-love and about self-acceptance. This is obvious. What is important for these particular people is to know that the way in which they feel, there is nothing wrong with them. That they are still human beings worthy of love. Sex does not have to define who you are. In fact, really, it's nobody's business. Even as we sit up on the ships, we are not given permission to observe your intimate moments, certainly not in my experience, it's none of my business. I have been told this and I have come to understand that this is very true. Whatever these people feel, believe, identify with, there will be something, a being, a belief that they do identify with. It's necessary to exist or 
they are existing on negative energy because they are simply wanting to burst themselves out of the shackles of being labelled. That can be a great motivator for declaring yourself as one of these non-sexual beings. If they don't identify with either, then they will be identifying with another thing. I can guarantee you that, my friend. It may be a god, what they appear and and perceive to be something to be worshipped. Perhaps they worship themselves because they believe they're in a state of godliness. Yes. And really, there is a belief system that does drive these people. Now, they may only share the surface information with you because they are a minority. I'm not going to say to you that they will become more common, no, but I will say to you that more and more humans will come into the planet with a non-defined non sexual preference. It will not be public knowledge, it will not matter. What will matter is love. These asexual beings, they need love as much as any other human. So there will be something that they identify with even though they claim they don't. Does that answer the question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Endu. We're, we're coming towards the, uh, the end time of our, uh, our time today. Um, do you have any uh, closing messages or a blessing you'd like to impart on us before uh, you go? I would simply like to remind you all to worship and embrace the goddess in your women and ask the men to bring the goddess out so that they reap the benefits and we have a wonderful circuitry of energy moving. I just want to leave you with that thought. I am going to ask something here. Sarah, is she still with us? Yes, yeah, she's nearby here. I am here. Yes. Sarah, I'm going to ask you, please, move into your goddess space, which you do quite easily. And I would love to hear your blessing at this moment. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, I was thinking about one such. Um, I was thinking about Isis, actually. <laughs> Um, or the being we know as Isis. And so into your goddess energy, move into your goddess energy and allow whatever needs to flow to flow. Hey Salatu Ni Akatu Asha Seleni Atalunu. Ha ta o sha ni ha kulunti ukuna hashalutu asia tianya ha kalanai o ashu tayanaka. Lovely, thank you, sir. I would like to make that my finishing blessing. I think that is an adequate example. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Much love to you. Much love and do. I shall leave now and you may proceed with blessings if you like. Much love to you all. Thank you. Namaste. Much love and do. Thank you for coming. Much love and do. Thank you. Much love. Hello, Kim. Welcome back. Hey. Hey, <laughs> you need a drink? Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. While you're doing, okay? oh yeah, everything's fine. Right. <laughs> Sarah, do you want to do a, another blessing while Kim is back, or 
Okay. If you wish. Maybe just another one. I think there's another one there beside you or something. Yeah. Ooh. There's another energy as well. I was thinking Naga, but there's something else that stepped up. Your Siatuki Kayati Iti Oso Kayawa Nyanya Siani Kayanuko Ayati Kiyau Tianyaka Sayato Kaini I Asiatuku Ashi ati ani ati anu koya Ayashata iwanai ati aisi ayati Kai unu koya ni ati anu ya Ayati ani ata Namaste, Sarah. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Thank you. Anyone else? I believe Will, if his microphone is working today. I believe my microphone is working. It is. Yes. Uh -huh. Let me get in my goddess space here. <laughs> I speak to all... You are well loved. Sometimes we forget to love ourselves and to nurture ourselves. Nurturing the self is very important. No matter who you are, no matter how others see you, see yourself as divine. You matter. You are important for this world. You are important for your family, for your friends. Look in the mirror, hug yourself, love yourself. It doesn't matter what other labels that people put upon you, you do not have to accept those labels. Or you can wear them as badges of honor. I am this or I am that. You are you and I am me. Love yourself, nurture yourself. Nurture your family, nurture your friends. See them for the divine beings that they are. Namaste. Namaste. Are there any others? Any I'm others? I know you're looking at him, but that doesn't make him. Yes, speak. Brian. 
<laughs> you may have stepped away. I do. No, I'm oh. here. I'm here. Oh. I'm here. Oh, okay. What's that? Are you willing? Are you up for a blessing? Uh, sure, sure. Um, That'd be lovely. I'll do a, a galactic language. Okay. Ilia koto noa, shilia kadi, isi akadi, ku huanani, ihi akotoa, ilia kani hi, asana kotoa. Iliatano waki Kani so tu wa Shiliakan niakohua Ia Ia so hua Namaste Namaste Thank you, Brian Namaste All righty, wonderful Thank you, Kim, as well Thanks for all the great messages today it was wonderful thanks for everybody that participated this has been a human colony hukalo TV webinar I'd like to thank you all for coming I'd like to thank you all for participating and we will see you again next week love you all oh I posted the retreat link on the YouTube and the other places where you can get more information about that if you were interested in that Yes, right. we will be engaging the Divine Feminine and the Divine Masculine. Just bringing Excellent. out the power of the combination of the two together. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. It already <laughs> is awesome. It already is awesome. It's going to be really, really awesome. We're going to get your now. Yes. All righty. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. Jim will be back next week, so we'll be doing this again then. All right. Bye for now. Bye.